sacred well that was guarded by her husband, Necton, and his three male cupbearers. She broke the taboos of the well by walking around it three times, anti-clockwise, looking deep into its shaded waters. As a result, the well burst forth into a great fountain, carrying Boan along as it began to form a great river, winding towards the sea by the great force of the waters. Boan lost an eye, a hand, and a leg. These parts of her body created different portions of the river Boan as it formed, and the landscape around it. Her little lap dog, Dibbella, was carried by the waters too, until eventually, they reached the estuary where the rushing waters met the sea. Bowen became the Milky Way, the great river of the sky which still bears her name. Valkhnevofen, the way of the white cow. While her little dog, Dibilla, was transformed into the islands of Rockabilly. When we look out to sea today, or up at the great river of the sky at night, we are reminded of the great sacrifice of Bowen, who gave herself so that the world and the cosmos could be created. I'm way in word. I am wind on sea. I'm Paul Flahan. I am Ocean Wave. I'm Foam Mara. I am Roar of Sea. I am God 
who fashions fire for a head.
champion was Lou, whose name survives today as the Irish name of County Loud. And on the county crest is emblazoned his epithet, Lou Samaldonald, Lou the Many Gifted. Saint Patrick introduced Christianity into Ireland in the year 432 AD. He travels to the Hill of Slain, where he lit the Paschal fire, whose flame burns so brightly it was seen all across the landscape. was the miracle child of Newgrange. He was said to have been conceived and born in the same day. His parents were the Dagda, the Sun God, and Bowie, goddess of the River Boyne and the Milky Way. Great monument of Schiedenbroga, known today as New Brain. One night, in a dream, a beautiful young woman appeared to him. He fell immediately in love with her, but when he tried to embrace her, she vanished. Night after night, the mystery maiden appeared in his dreams, but he could not hold her. He soon became lovesick and refused to meet. 
As he wasted away, his parents became worried for him and enlisted the help of their fellow deities, the Tua de Dama. Their urgent task was to find out the woman's name and to ascertain her location. News soon came from both Jarok, brother of the Dagda, that he had found the name at a mysterious place called the Lake of the Dragon's Mouth. Both said that Angus must go to the lake to see whether he recognised the woman as the beautiful maiden he had seen in his dreams. When he arrived at the lake, Angus could see 150 beautiful white swans linked by silver chains. He called out to Care, whose name had been revealed by both Jerem. Who calls me? asked one of the swans, more beautiful than all the rest. It is Angus. Please come to me, he replied. Care came to the shore, but she told Angus that if he was to have her love, he must take her form. He put his two hands on her and transformed into a swan, and they slept together. The next day, they departed from the lake, and the two great birds flew northeast until they came to the great monument of Newgrange. They made sweet music at Brunabonia, music so beautiful that the people who heard it fell asleep for three days and nights. From that point on, Care remained with Angus in the great brew of Newgrange. It is said that some years they assumed human form and other years they were swans. Even today, the whooper swans spend the winter at Newgrange and in the spring they are seen to fly off towards the north, perhaps towards the land of eternal youth.